Hello everyone, can you hear me? Okay. Augmented Space and Asteroid Prospecting ASAP. Um, ASAP because we need to be doing something about this ASAP. We have heard that in 30 to 40 years, we are going to be out of a lot of silicaceous and carbonaceous chemicals and what they call rare earth metals are really rare, so those as well might run out. So when you do hear about asteroid mining, what are the key reactions? Something like this, really, this must be impossible. And well, of course, it's, it's traumatic. And you know what? We are not here to deny. We really do not know if these things are possible, plausible or not. Hence, before you go to the step of asteroid mining, which is going to the asteroid, trying to extract metals, minerals, or the catastrophic idea of trying to drag an asteroid back, which might just enter the atmosphere like a projectile, we might want to take a step back and do some prospecting. So what do we do with it? Um, is it really as impossible or impractical as we want to imagine? Let's look at it. We actually have three different considerations in our idea. What we want to look at in this is, number one, we want to chart a route and try to identify if by based on relational scoring of different asteroids, and we use that lots of data this is about how we plan will talk, is it even possible to have the most efficient economic route? The next step would be, if it is possible, we want to launch multiple microsatellites, each weighing around three kilograms in weight. Why that number is essential is because Okay. Yeah. Why that number is essential is because, let's assume this rocket here, Dragon, it can carry around 3,000 kilograms. What we are proposing is a 3 kilogram satellite, around 50 of these would cost, would be around 150 kilograms, that's around 5% of the total mass that can be carried. And each of these satellites, some would actually orbit the planets, um, planetoids that are large enough to be orbited, or the others would just slingshot around them, try to shoot a small projectile towards them, and capture some debris that can be captured. Why this is essential? Because right now, all the information we have about the CMS types asteroids, it's all based on the surface spectroscopy. We really don't know what's going on inside there. And that could be a big surprise to have. What we want to do is try to examine some amount of debris that we can extract from there and try to see if our understanding of the economic value, about the distance, and about the scores that we are developing now, is it even correct? Um, moving on. Oh. Okay, so that's our primary target. That's not our primary target. <laughs> the primary target is actually to reach the asteroid belt using an unmanned shuttle and something that's cost effective, something that doesn't weigh too much. And why we want to do focus on the weight and aspect because every kilogram that you send to space is going to cost you a lot of dollar, especially sending something like water. Water is essential, like because even if, if in future if you plan a manned mission, you need water, carbon, if you're carrying, organic. Yeah. Organic minerals. You also need a lot of silicaceous and metallic elements like, let's say, titanium, palladium. However, the resources on Earth are going to run dry very, very soon. So what we are proposing is try to go and prospect and actually size up the asteroids. They say that the most, uh, there's a $35 billion profit opportunity in the most expensive or the most valuable asteroid. We want to really identify if that's a profitable opportunity and that's something that we should actually be focusing towards or is there other avenues that we should be exploring. And to focus more on how we reached some of our scores, some of our judgments and some of our ideas, I would eventually invite my friend Brad. Just yeah. Hold it tight. Okay. Oh, perfect. Might be better off with the other down. Okay. Take me if you could just hold that. I can hold that. This. Okay. All right. So um, I, I don't need the image. All right. So basically, what we're doing is we have uh, created a POC around. Uh, um, basically, we used the Wolfram analytics engine and we created a uh, our own solution. What we're doing is we are getting uh, APIs from NASA, so this, the small body data, which is asteroid mining data, which is readily available from data.nasa.gov, we are util utilizing that. We are also uh, utilizing the data from, uh, uh, from the Wolfram API, and uh, it has around 50,000 data points, which is enough data about asteroids, and uh, it, it, it can actually give a lot of analytics related information. But we were not satisfied with that, we created our own data points also. We have been constantly logging temperature and pressure data since uh, yesterday, and we have uh, like collected uh, around 1,100 and something data points from Earth, of course. <laughs> so if our system was on Mars, uh, or, or any asteroid, 
uh, then it could collect the data points on that satellite, basically. So um, how the whole thing works is uh, NASA has a Wrangler mission. So they would basically take the satellites around the asteroids, and they would, exactly how Chetan said, they would uh, collect the debris and collect the information out, out of it. Our sensor, we go there, create, uh, take the data from there. Our API, will, uh, we'll expose an API, which will uh, return the data on Earth. Uh, this, this image, which is blinking here, <laughs> this is actually a 3D model. And you see these dots. Uh, these dots, they can move. Chetan, could you move them? Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> So we can analyze those dots, and you can see it's it's a plane. If you could yeah, just move it, yeah. So basically, this is our uh, <coughs> yeah. Th this is the way. Um, basically, uh, we are analyzing which asteroids are the most usable asteroids for now. Uh, we can use different parameters, and we can have all those all those asteroids which are in this particular plane. We can utilize. Uh, we can get data from them. Uh, one more thing is we are uh, we want to demonstrate our live sorry um, because we are uh, collecting live data we would like to demonstrate our live uh, data collection thing could you go to the next tab um, so we right. did some uh, some simple mathematic uh, some simple equation it was blinking at the time yeah. I know but I already gave you guys a minute extension I'm really sorry guys okay. sorry can I just demo one <laughs> Because we are uh, logging live temperature data, uh, and it should move. If we heat it up, it will. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> cool. Yeah, we'll see. It, it went down. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we also have a video integration, so whenever we reach like an optimal temperature, all the temperatures from there probably should move away. It will send a notification immediately. Um, I'm really sorry, guys. It was yeah, it's cool. already like almost a <laughs> <laughs> session. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions from the panel, from the audience? Yes, please. So you built the the sensors yourself over the weekend. What? What are all the things that it's currently picking up? It's what are the things it's detecting? Currently just logging temperature and pressure data because we're using those sensors. But we can log uh, we have like thirty five sensors with us right now. <laughs> so And the concept behind the sensors was that we want to develop a dynamic environment where new information about new asteroids might be coming in. We want to have a system which is adaptable to those kind of things and which will also of course any notifications when systems change. So those are two things we probably could not display but yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any question? Yeah. Just because I got distracted by the, the blinking, could you just like one sentence quick overview of what you're doing? I'm sorry. Yeah, sure, why not? What we're doing is we are, we are trying to use some existing APIs about uh, small bodies, which are not planets. There are 50,000 of them on NASA databases, and we are trying to overlay them with sensor data to try to find out what is the best possible bet for us to go to a asteroid and mine it out or prospect it out and see if that's financially viable. If not, let's just throw our energy somewhere else. If yes, then let's send something out there. Awesome. In short. Great, thank you. <laughs> thank you.